Having trouble with the volume. I don't know, I can't. Is your TV microphone here? Is your TV microphone? I did. I tried everything. There's no volume on here. That doesn't, that's for another TV. Yeah. That's for this. See if there's a volume on there. Is there a volume there? No. Yeah. This is LG is the TV. There's no volume on it. Cracking. Yeah, there's no volume on there. Isn't that bizarre? Can they hear who they? There's no comment. I'm still on the There's only one place. Can you turn the volume up on the phone? You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have it right here. It's not working. Yeah. 
There's nothing on there. There you go. There. Where it says audio, uh, I just keep there. pushing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. There's an important statement he just made. Initiate in origin. It's not guys in UFOs. It's initiate beings. He just died about a year ago. John Anthony West. Brilliant guy. <clears throat> Egyptologists is that if an earlier people than the Egyptians erected 
is not the place to present evidence of Atlantis. But there is a relevant architectural factor here. If Egypt was an Atlantean colony, the Sphinx might have been built by the Atlanteans too. Being an island, the people of Atlantis were maritime, and their ships traded with Central and South America. They also passed through the Straits of Gibraltar, referred to by Plato in their traditional and mythological name as the Pillars of Hercules. The Atlanteans traded with Phoenicia and with what we now call Egypt. The architectural pattern of Atlantis was the pyramid, and they built pyramids in all their colonies. The Atlanteans planted their pyramid traditions in Central and South America, and the present Mayan structures are an adaptation of them. The same pyramidal traditions became the ziggurats of Mesopotamia, especially in Babylon and Ur of the Chaldees. The pyramids of Egypt. They found the northern shores of the Mediterranean too inhospitable and cold and preferred the equitable climate of North Africa and the Fertile Crescent, which includes the coasts of what we now call Syria, Israel, and Egypt. If the writings on Atlantis are to be believed, the island continent possessed great cities requiring sophistication in art and technology and astrology as well. It was also the observation of Theosophy's excellent clairvoyant C.W. Ledbetter that some tribes of Atlantis were giants, men standing 11 feet or more tall. Physiologically, this is not beyond reach. Anyone who has made a study of the endocrine system of mankind, which has comfortably ranged itself from bushmen and pygmies four foot tall through to basketball players and pituitary giants of seven feet, knows that the giants of the Old Testament could have been a reality. Certainly, most mythology abounds with it. Anyone who has stood amongst the galleries of pillars in the temple at Karnak, or paced the length of 200-ton blocks of stone that make up the base of the Great Pyramid at Giza, can be forgiven for considering, at least as a hypothesis, the employment of giants on such projects, or possibly squandering them, if not en masse. If the low-lying lands of coastal Egypt, including the sink, which is the Qatar of the Tekma, really were covered with seas, and if the delta lands of the Nile had not yet been formed, then the Great Pyramid was built on a promontory overlooking the extended Mediterranean and could have acted as a beacon for ships approaching the Egyptian coast, even those from Atlantis. Ancient historians like Herodotus confirm that the Great Pyramid once had a capstone at its tip and that it shone like a beacon and could be seen 30 miles away, thus helping the fellaheen and farmers to settle border disputes and croplands after the yearly flood. At flood time, travelling could be by boat to nearby or distant villages, and the pyramid with its gleaming capstone helped to find a way home. Travelers making their way across the featureless western desert towards the Nile were also guided by the flashing capstone, some say even at full moon. The esoteric teaching is that the capstone was gold-plated, braced with iron. Robert Laval, Joan Hancock, in their excellent and recommended work, Keeper of Genesis, writing of the pyramid, referred to a piece of wrought iron originally coated with gold that was extracted from the core masonry near the southern exit to the king's chamber in 1837. Egyptologists say that it was 
was a latent truism to the pyramid, that it may well be a piece of the capstone which would have been in place before the facing stone had been positioned. The remainder of the capstone is lost. Esoteric tradition also suggests that the original facing stones that covered the surfaces of formation. This is very interesting here. They used a square horoscope. I'll explain that later.
was an esoteric astrology that plunged into the mainstream media, and it was our Tanaka who attempted to restore it, and would have done had he not been thwarted by the priesthood. It is in his tomb that the Egyptian Book of the Dead is hieroglyphed onto the walls. In this manner it was sanctified, made holy. Atanasan envisaged monotheism, one God for all people, and from him, this is reflected later, into the Hebrew and the Islamic beliefs. The degrade of orthodoxy of today's astrology must inevitably return to its divinely inspired forerunner, which of course is esoteric astrology. The Egyptian religion confirms these processes, as John West says. The Egyptian religion is entirely devoted to the transformation of the carnal into the spiritual. It is tied to spiritual preparation and to crossing over or bridging spiritual thresholds in some sense or another. And the transformation of animal habits into psychosynthesis is part of the process. Ancient Egyptian astrology was never intended to tell fortune or to analyze character or to diagnose medical conditions and to provide therapeutic tools. It opened doors into spiritual treasures and it gave the best times for doing it. In Dr. Muse's fine book, The Lion Path, he tells us early Egyptian astrology provided a practical framework for people on the path. He called it a resonantly assisted theity, where theos in the Greek stands for God and ergos is the Greek for working, thus working with God or communicating with God. The basis of our own school of esoteric astrology is just this, the devotion of subjective states in our daily living to the practice of such a theurgic type of communication. We call it the theurgic or theurgic method, and this will be covered in detail in a later program. Welcome. This concludes our first look at the early development and influence of astrology. We began this presentation with a maxim, as above, so below. This is an important concept to grasp. So to recap, storm clouds and thunder in the sky often mean turmoil of water on the ground. Lightning in the sky means illumination, illumination in the dark, and the production of nitrogen in the soil, stimulating growth. Comets in the heavens sometimes used to cause panic in the cities and forewarn of tragedy. Even today, tragedy has struck. The recent visitation of the comet Hale-Bopp triggered the mass suicide of 39 people sick of life in the city of San Diego in March 1997. Mass configurations of the planets are important events in the heavens, but they often correspond to important and historic events on the Earth. The Second World War only became intense at a time when seven planets in Taurus opposed the Earth in Scorpio, indicating astrologically violent world war action. In May of the year 2000, one of the biggest conjunctions of recent times will again take place when a total of eight planets will be in the sign of Taurus. This indicates, with Uranus and Aquarius, mass printing of voluminous books like a world telephone index. And it will be interesting to see if the world's economy, financial institutions, and the stock market 
is a real byproduct will be adversely affected. It's when the bank collapse happened. Yeah, it, it triggered, it was triggered by those. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen that day. It means the wheels are in motion for it to happen. Did they go to See if you push this, Julia, a couple of times. Just to go faster. Yeah, I did, but I wasn't sure why. Maybe I didn't. Maybe See, you have to do twice faster. You do. That's what I did. Okay, we'll watch uh, five or 10 minutes of this since we had trouble with our, had trouble with our.
Lord of the universe and protector before all of time. Let us take your candle light for all world. It's this oh. one. You know, maybe all the way up. The painting of the great invocation, point of light within the mind of God. Okay, I think we're done with that. Why is that so hot? You know how hot that is? You need to disconnect the things. What? Off from the web of writing in the stage.